Welcome to Tuvalu. This South Pacific Island nation is famous for its amazing marine life, love of beach volleyball, and... Talofa. Talofa. It's warm welcome. Talofa and welcome to Tuvalu. The 11,000 people who live across Tuvalu's nine islands grow their food, build their homes, go to work and school on a total landmass that's only 26 square kilometres in size. The foremost challenge that we are facing is coastal erosion. Land is a very scarce resource that we have. Now, sadly, as global warming melts glaciers, adding more water to our oceans, Tuvalu's landmass is shrinking. So much so that people may be unable to live here one day. I don't want to lose my, my culture, you know, my kids to grow up in a foreign land. Back in the, in the days when I was young, uh, we have a nice uh, sandy beach. We used to come here and play. With the climate change, sea level rise, there's a lot of um, coastal erosion. So um, during king tides, we have uh, just the roads coming from the north to the village. They are cut off from coming here because of all the, the, the rubble and the waves crashing onto the road. So they cannot get their shopping. They cannot bring their kids to, to school. So that is the, 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 the problem that we are facing here. If nothing's done, the situation in Tuvalu will get worse and worse. In fact, scientists estimate that within a few generations, 95% of the land here will be flooded whenever the tide's high. We are like the, the front line of frontliners combating the climate change. And the government has given in a lot of effort in trying to protect our coastlines all different kinds of seawalls. They didn't work. We need to reclaim land. Um, that's the way forward. Alan's one of the people reclaiming land in Tuvalu as part of a United Nations project supported by Australia. But how do you actually reclaim land? Well, the first step in Tuvalu's case was to make a 3D model of the whole country using something called LiDAR. So what is LiDAR? And how does it work? LiDAR is a light and range detection uh, method. So the aeroplane flies over an area and shoots down a light um, you know, to, to collect data. It collects topography of that area, the trees, houses, everything is captured. So it's kind of like scanning all the islands from a plane to make a 3D digital model. Awesome. For Tuvalu, it is the first in the world to have a national data set using LiDAR. It, um, it shows where the places will be inundated in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, if there's a sea level rise of 50 centimetres, you know, all, all different scenarios. Using this very clever model, the team knew exactly where and how the first section of reclaimed land should be constructed on Funafuti, where more than half of the population of Tuvalu lives. Being coral atolls, Tuvalu's islands lack rock or other materials commonly used for this kind of coastal construction. So, working with an Australian construction company, the plan was to fill large geotextile bags with sand dredged from deeper waters. Enter the dredger. Let's take a closer look at this machine and how it works. We are in the wheelhouse of a dredging vessel. This vessel has got a, a suction pipe, like a vacuum, that drops down to the ocean floor and then it starts sucking the sand uh, together with the seawater. So it will come up through the pipe as a mixture of seawater and sand. And then there is a booster pump on the vessel that pushes the, um, the mixture up the pipe and onto the land. The goal was to reclaim 7.3 hectares of land. That meant dredging a lot of sand. In fact, about 270,000 cubic meters of sand that amount of sand and say coconuts, that's 180 million coconuts. After pumping, the water will seep out and the sand remains. And then the 
contractors will compact the, the sand. And at the end, we put in the smaller bags. We are actually uh, standing on a reclaimed land, about 7.3 hectares in the, the total area. First and foremost, this particular uh, reclaimed land will provide shelter and protection against the waves for the local communities. Secondly, there's going to be some houses here, a local market, recreational area for kids to play. Most exciting thing is that now we, are, we have found a solution. This is the only safe dry land in, in the whole of Tuvalu. Flooding is not an issue here. The, the crops behind this uh, are safe, but other areas, they still have that problem. My hope is that if we can build up a more resilient Tuvalu, people they can always remain here.